Okay, welcome back. So let's look at an example of applying these matched pairs concepts. Okay, so we're going to look at an example here. We've got some data on husband's age and their wife's age. And say our hypothesis is maybe we read somewhere right, that husbands tend to be older than their wives. All right, so we want to look at the data and actually answer this question at our basic significance level of 0.5. All right, so first, really, we should be thinking, okay, I'm going to have two, two sets of data here. All right, so let's take a look at that at the data. So I've got husband's ages here and wives' ages. Okay, so two sets of data. So we've got to think, is there some sort of relationship here? Is there some sort of way I could match them up? Well, yes, here there literally is a relationship, right? But we, if we're thinking about the couples overall, right, we're saying we have 16 couples. So we can treat this as matched pairs. Now let's treat the difference as... And because of how our data was set up, we had to call them a husband's age first, then we had wives' age. So let's treat the difference as husbands minus wives. How would we set up our hypotheses? Well, remember, our parameter of interest is the mean difference, right? And if we want to show an effect, here the effect happens to be that husbands are older than wives. If we want to show an effect, we have to assume from the beginning there is no effect. Right, so our null hypothesis is that the mean of these differences is zero. There's no difference in age. Now here's where we really got to be careful with match pairs when setting up our hypotheses. Okay, so remember we were looking for older, right? Is what we were, is what we're, the effect that we're looking for, older than their wives. So think about how we defined our differences here. It's husband's age minus wife's age. All right, so if our effect was present, if husbands were actually older than their wives, right, we would see here these numbers would be bigger than these numbers. So we would see a bunch of positive differences. So I would set up my alternative hypothesis as a right-tailed test. I'm looking for positive differences on average. Okay, so that's important because we really have to look and see how did we set up these differences. Now it doesn't matter what I what I take minus the other sample. It doesn't matter what I call sample one and sample two. Right? But I have to stay consistent. Okay, so here since I define my differences as husbands minus wives, according to the effect I'm looking for, we'd have positive, we'd have positive results. So I'm going with a right tailed test. Alright. Now if my data had been switched up, say I had used wives minus husbands. Well then I would have a bunch of negative differences if this effect was was present. So I would do a left tailed test if I define my differences as wives minus husbands age. Okay? So maybe we'll we'll take a look at that in a minute. Alright, so here's my data. Now the first step is find these differences. Okay, so this is uh, super easy to do in Excel. There's a, there's a few different ways we can do this, and we'll, we'll look at all of them. Okay, so I can find these differences, and, it, and it's probably good to note that I'm defining these as husbands minus wives. All right, so I'm going to find these differences. I'm going to take this guy, so this couple, 49 minus 43. They've got a difference of 6. This one... The wife is older, so we got a negative difference, and so on. Do that for each one. Now here, I could find, I could use this average function. I could find my average. I could find my sample standard deviation. So standdev.s. Find my sample standard deviation. And we know, we know n is 16. All right, so this is x bar d. This is x bar d, this is sd, this is nd. All right, so we could go from here and, and solve everything. Um, 
So let's let's just stay with this for now. All right. So and then we'll we'll look at how to do it in mini tab. Okay. So as you say, I just have my descriptives. I've defined my differences. Here's all I need. Now technically, we should if we're when we're using the t distribution because we know we know these differences. It's it's a mean, the sampling distribution. If I had a large number of differences, maybe it'd be maybe we could get away with z, but most of the time we're going to be using t with matched pairs. All right? We know technically to use t, we need to check our outliers and our box plot or sorry, our box plot for outliers and our histogram for skewness. So I made a box plot, made a histogram of these things. They they look okay. All right, so we're in good shape. All right, so we've checked our assumptions. We're using T. We've got our hypotheses set up. So let's calculate our test statistic. All right, so our test statistic formula, we know what that looks like. Plugging into that, and one thing to notice here is 2.44 minus 0. Where does that 0 come from? Remember mu d naught, or our claim was zero. All right, so we come up with a test statistic of 2.213. Now remember this was a right-tailed test, so our p-value would be the area to the right of 2.213. Okay, so let's. Now we know we could estimate this with our table. Okay, so bring up my t table here so I could estimate this p-value so we want the area to the right of 2.213 with n was 16 so 15 degrees of freedom alright so I'm working in this row so 2.213 would be somewhere in here probably closer to this so our p-value is going to be somewhere near 0 0.025 alright but somewhere between 0 0.025 and 0 0.01 Either way, it's going to be less than alpha. Let's find an exact p-value here. Okay, so my test statistic, again, was 2.213. Okay, so let's use t.dist. Now, we've used t.dist before, but let's... So t.dist, remember, that gives you the area to the left, and that's fine. I could just do 1 minus t.dist. But the t-distribution does have these nice kind of features, a two-tailed and a right-tailed. Now this is a right-tailed, so just to save us a step of having to say 1 minus, I'm just going to use that, and my degrees of freedom is 15. Now just to check, let's say, is this the same as 1 minus t-dist, the test statistic, degrees of freedom 15, of course cumulative, and those should match up. Okay, so we so remember with the t test statistic, we can't find a p-value, an exact p-value at the table. We can estimate it though, um, or we could find an exact p-value using technology. Here I did it in Excel. So now I want to show you how to do this in Minitab, and there's a couple ways we can do this. Okay, so I'm going to take the data, copy it over into Minitab. All right, so. Minitab will do it, so it does have a two sample test built in. So if I go to stat, basic statistics here, paired T, and notice it doesn't even have it doesn't even have paired Z option. Alright, so paired T is always what we're gonna want to do. Alright, here I'm gonna tell it we have each sample in its own column. So sample one, let's call husband, sample two, let's call wives. Again, remember it does matter. I gotta be consistent with that because I've defined my differences. It takes it sample one minus sample two. We want then a right-tailed test. Our hypothesized difference is zero. Okay, and let's see what it gives us. So, test statistic. We found that already. P-value here. So, see, it does all the work for you. Now, we actually didn't need this column of differences in Minitab. But one thing I can do if I have the column of differences, I can just go to stat, basic statistics, one sample t. All right, one or more samples. Click the difference as my sample. Perform hypothesis test. 
put a hypothesized mean of zero with a right-tailed test, this should give me the exact same results as going to stat, basic statistics, paired t, and putting in both samples. All right, so because remember, a match paired test is essentially a one sample test on those differences. All it's doing when you go to stat, basic stat, paired t versus stat, basic stat, one sample t, it's just creating this difference call. That's all it's doing. Okay, so once we figured out our p-value, all that stuff, we got that, we reject the null, we have statistically significant evidence. It does look like, on average, at least from this sample, husbands are older than their wives, on average. Okay, so lots of times we, we do a confidence interval example first and then a hypothesis test, because confidence intervals are probably a little when we're looking at is there a difference between two samples, before we estimate that difference with the confidence interval, we first want to establish that yes, there actually is a difference with a hypothesis test. Okay, so usually we do the hypothesis test first, find out is there a difference. If so, okay, great, let's estimate it. All right, so let's do a 95% confidence interval for the difference here. So our sample statistics looked like this plugging into our formula our degrees of freedom this should be should be pretty easy just plug and chuck alright so of course we want to interpret this we can interpret it similarly to what we've seen before we're 95 percent confident that the actual mean difference is captured by the interval that we've created alright so the confidence interval is super easy to do super easy to calculate right but the big point here is we want to follow up a hypothesis test with a confidence interval we probably wouldn't want to just make this confidence interval first because we don't even know if there's a difference to begin with. Alright so thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.